comes from a very humble origin and was born and raised in Trinidad and Tobago. My parents are not educated and since their births, they inherited a world of extreme poverty and violence. Needless to say, I was on the receiving end of their inheritance. After losing one brother to such extreme poverty and violence, we fled to Canada first and then eventually to the U.S. I've been working at least 30 hours a week since I've been eight years old. Whether I was sick or hungry, I never missed work. Most of the times in my life, I was the top student in my class. And for the few times I was not the top student, I was always in the top two to five. I have a work and study ethic like no other. While obtaining a master's degree in exercise physiology at UT Austin, and another master's degree in applied mathematics at CU Denver, and always helping my fellow classmates. I also became very popular. As on several occasions in my life, I was called names such as Packy, Spick, and Sand Nigger. Sometimes too, I had the pleasure of being called these names at work and other establishments as well. On many occasions, I would help fellow students in my physics class or biomechanics class and do their homework for them. Some of these students would then get an A and I would get a B or a C. And they would ask me how I got a grade lower than them. I did not have the heart to tell them that even though we turned in the same project and I was the leader of this project and did most of the work, their project grade that they told me they got was always at least 10% higher than the grade I received. When we would get our exams back, I recall one professor giving me 79% on this math exam. When I looked at the correct answers, my grade should have been 94%. I told him and he hesitated, but given the answers and what I said, he changed the grade to 94%. He's a math professor and he miscounted 15%. It's possible. However, when my final grade came out of the course, it never added up anything close, and my grade was much lower. I did not have the heart to tell my friends any of this, as even though we lived in the same world, their reality was much different from mine, and how could they understand? Despite my unbridled work ethic, always having a good and positive attitude, and having everyone tell me what a great work and person I am. And despite all my credentials, education, experience, I still cannot get a full-time job. For example, I applied for this full-time job in Austin and they told me that I was not selected for this job as the position was filled. The job was still posted, so I had my friend William Crockman apply for the job. He said to me, Moses, if they turned you down, who are so super qualified for this job, and I'm not even half as qualified as you are, how will they even accept me, especially when they told you that the position has been filled? I pleaded with William to just please apply for the job. So he did. He applied and got called for an interview within one week of submitting a half-filled application. Please recognize the fact that this is only a small portion of what I go through on a daily basis in my life. Given my past experiences while living in the US, I'm not allowed to express feelings of anger, sadness, and frustration like everyone else. I have to be more upright, exercise more moral integrity, honor, respect, and always have a smile on my face and say, yes sir, no sir, yes ma'am, no ma'am, and move out of everyone's way all the time. My feelings do not matter, my rights don't matter, and things like equity and equality does not matter for people like me. I've learned that there are worse things than poverty and violence. I've learned that I live in a reality where I am a pawn and you are a king. I am a fool and you are an emperor. I'm always wrong and you are always right. I've died well before I've lived. Will someone please shoot me?